good evening, everybody. It is great to see you. It's Susan Agin, the executive director of the Queensborough Performing Arts Center. And this is QPAC Live, a program of the Queensborough Performing Arts Center. We are so glad to have you with us here tonight to kick off the weekend. And um, we, uh, we have so much to talk about. You know, we come to you live every week to celebrate the arts with programs that are unique and exciting, and tonight is no different. And we have so much to talk about before we get started. I'm glad that you're here with us. Uh, now, some new news. You know that you could watch us do this broadcast on Facebook. You can watch us on YouTube. You now can also watch us on our website, which is www.visitqpac.org. That's there, qpac.org. You can watch us right on our website. And also, beginning next week, you're going to be able to watch us on QPTV's website. That's Queen's Public Television. You're going to be able to watch us streaming live on their website as well. And then, as if that wasn't enough, beginning August 18th, uh, these programs will be airing live on the Queen's public television stations. They have multiple stations in Queens and also some stations in Manhattan. And you'll be able to watch these programs right on your own television. So if you know someone who doesn't like to watch or engage uh, with this kind of stuff online, they're going to be able to watch some of these special programs right from the comfort of their own living rooms on their own TVs. So we are trying to reach you in every way that we can. So thanks again for joining us. Also, I want to let you know that um, we have started, we've launched yet another virtual program. That program is called QPAC Alive. And what we do is we offer fabulous workshops for both children and adults to take at their convenience uh, at home online. So as long as you have access to a computer or a laptop, uh, which has sound and a camera, and I do believe that if you are watching us today, you probably have those amenities, you too can take one of our fabulous workshops. I urge you to sign on to www.visitqpac.org to see what we are offering actually beginning next week. We have two fabulous programs for young people, uh, a dance program and a magic program being taught by the great illusionist Reza, and we have two fabulous adult programs, The Art of Songwriting, and I think now at this point, everybody has something to say. Uh, and also we are producing a virtual talent show. So you uh, would be able to, you will be coached by professionals in the performing arts industry. And then after a number of weeks, you will, uh, we will assist you in putting together a reel, as we say in the biz, uh, of your talent. And the show will premiere here on QPAC Live. So we are really very excited about those advances, and we hope that you will explore some of them with us. Now, Today is going to be a lot of fun because, as you know, if you have been with us before, you can interact with us. All you need to do is type in your questions as you are watching this broad broadcast below. Just type in your questions and we are going to be able to interact with you. You can send us questions. You can send a question to me. You can send questions to our artists today. And uh, that's going to be uh, fun that we could have that exchange together. Um, so before we get started, let me tell you this. Uh, do stick around for the Q&A. And you know what? For those of you that have been with us the last few weeks, and for those of you that have actually attended a performance at QPAC, I'm going to take you down memory lane just for a minute. And I'm going to tell you why when, when we come back. I want you to take a look. For those of you that don't know, the Queensboro Performing Arts Center is located in Bayside, Queens, on the campus of Queensboro Community College. And uh, this is our beautiful theater. For those of you that have never been there, um, we wanted you to see exactly who we are and uh, what we look like. 
And uh, here are some pictures from some performances that took place here uh, at the Queensboro Performing Arts Center. This was the night we had KC and the Sunshine Band. I know you know who they are. Uh, get down tonight and put on my, I want to put on my boogie shoes. KC and the Sunshine Band, it was a sold out performance. We had a great time that night. These folks, these folks really put a smile on my face. Uh, they were there. They, they came to the theater too have a good time and nothing was going to stop them from from doing just that. Now, we don't only produce pop shows. Uh, we bring in shows from all over the world. Here is the wonderful Jose Porcel Ballet Flamenco. Perhaps you were there at the theater when we presented this beautiful show. Uh, and here, of course, are the funny and entertaining VOCA people. So that just gives you an idea of the various programs that we offer. And uh, we are going to look forward to seeing you at the theater when we are again allowed to assemble. And what's even more exciting, if it could get even more exciting, uh, we will be coming back to a brand new venue, a venue that will have undergone some tremendous improvements to the tune of $13 million. So what a celebration that will be. So folks, do think about what you'd like to ask our guest tonight. We have with us an, an extraordinary performer. He is a singer. He's an actor. He's what we call an all-around entertainer. And not only that, he sings in 32 different languages. You heard that right, 32. Now, I don't know how many he's going to sing today or how many he's going to sing in today, but I know that he's going to give us at least a sample of some of those. So kick back, relax, take off your shoes, pour yourself a drink, and uh, stick around for the Q&A. Think about what you'd like to ask us. And please help me welcome the wonderful Yaniv Zarif. Enjoy this performance. And we'll be back with you in just a moment. Thanks so much. Good evening, QPAC. My name is Yaniv Zarif. Welcome to my show tonight, Music Beyond Language. Tonight's show is a celebration about how music and language are reinvented. And tonight you're gonna to get to hear the story of my life as a polyglot of 32 different languages. That's right, 32 languages. You're gonna hear some really popular songs that you know and love, probably in a way that you've never heard them before, or perhaps in a way that they were meant to be heard. So please do enjoy the show. It is my absolute privilege to be performing for you all tonight. And I can't wait to see you all at the Q&A afterward. Thanks so much. This turnout, I am so happy to see you and everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How incredible was it that just 60 minutes ago, the legend Cheetah Rivera was just standing on this stage? I mean, it was so nice for Miss Rivera to open for me. I'm really flattered. You guys enjoying the show so far? All right. Uh, so Yaniv, so. Yaniv is probably a strange name that a lot of you have never heard before. Does anybody have any idea where it, uh, where it comes from? Florida. Florida. <laughs> it's not a lie. I mean, obviously, mo like most of you do, because ninety percent of this audience I'm related to. But um, still, for those of you that don't know, <laughs> um, my family comes from the beautiful land of Israel. Thank you. Thank you. So I am so proud of my heritage, and I love sharing stories of my lineage. Uh, in fact, I was actually born in South Florida, and my father, to this day, runs a Middle Eastern restaurant with the best Mediterranean food you have ever had in your life. <laughs> yes, so 
there's a flood there. If you ever head down to Boynton Beach, make sure you stop by the Falafel House. Right? Ask for my father, and maybe he'll give you, if you tell him you know me, he'll give you 50% off. Uh, that's a lie, he'll probably charge you double. Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, but I used to go back and forth to Israel as a child, and you know, still to this day, because I have lots of family there, and I even had the wonderful privilege and honor of being bar mitzvahed at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. Yes, thank, you so much. thank you. So, Israel, Jews, anybody have any idea where this next song is going? How about now? Uh, I'm going to be bringing you into the land of Israel, and I'm going to give you a little glimpse into the language of my family, which is Hebrew. So, ladies and gentlemen, from Feather on the Roof, this is Sunrise Sunset, or Zricha Shkia. Is this the little girl I carry? Is this the little boy at play? I don't remember growing older. Where did we They look so natural together, just like two newlyweds should be. Is there a canopy in store for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
accompany you all into the Austrian Alps, and we're going to be singing in German. However, we're not just going to be singing, we're going to be yodeling. <laughs> now, yodeling is something that's uh, very new to me. Uh, I was taught how to yodel by an Irish Filipina from Australia <laughs> named Annie Francis. Now, Annie, you know, you know Annie, yeah, that's great. Um, so, Annie, um, who is so wonderful, has this incredible voice, such a magnificent soul. Uh, she taught me how to yodel, and she also has no idea that I'm doing this, but we are being filmed tonight. So everyone say, hi, Annie, to the camera. Hi. She would say, michukas, which is uh, break a leg in Australian, so I should have that to my 32. Uh, her. Now, the translation, the words, the, the song only has two verses. The first verse translates as so. It's called Der Kuckuck's Jodler, okay? And it says that the cuckoo bird wakes up in a forest one morning to greet the day, okay? The second verse goes, when the cuckoo bird wakes up to greet the day, he tells the story of a boy and a girl who fall in love. And that's it. <laughs> so, that's a shame, music <laughs> In the fruit, when the sun and the shine the outer heart looks no wonder in bond. The outer heart looks no in bond. talented musician named George Kamikawa. Now, George Kamikawa is a bluegrass artist who plays six instruments, living in Bali from Japan. Uh, this guy is like cool beyond cool, okay? So I run into him, he's singing one of my favorite songs in the whole entire world, and um, he's singing in English actually, and uh, with the thickest Japanese accent you've ever heard. I mean, in all of his glory. He was so cool. So immediately I went up to him and I started speaking to him in my sufficient but limited Japanese. And I was like, and he was like, oh, wow, your Japanese is so good. And I was like, oh, please stop. I really don't like attention. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so then I said to him, look, I would love to sit down with you 
and uh, like I would love to buy you a drink and sit down with you. And if you could teach me how to sing that song in Japanese, I would appreciate it so much. And I, I would love to. I think it would be a great addition to my show. And he was like, Oh, absolutely! Like no problem. So we had paper and pen. We had a glass of scotch, and we had the best time ever. And he taught me how to sing it. I'm not going to introduce it because you guys probably know it. Uh, but I will leave you with a wise word of wisdom that uh, that George Kamikawa has left me, the wise Japanese prophet, George Kamikawa. <laughs> <laughs> which is, Anakano uh, Hanokaspi which translates to, you have very big nose. <laughs>
everybody. Hands up, hands up. That's the way we do big applause here at uh, QPAC Live. Hands up. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so happy to bring you Yaniv Zarif. Come on in, Yaniv. Hello, everybody at QPAC. Good evening. There you are. What about that? So let's see. I counted um, Hebrew, Japanese, sign language. Hold on. Do you really know sign language or did you learn sign language for your music? Which is it? Wow, your sign language is excellent, Susan. Well, what did you learn? <laughs> well, actually, I have a niece who is deaf. And really? I do, I do. Um, and uh, her name is Sharon. And um, I'm not fluent, but uh, I certainly know enough where I could communicate. And when uh, well, I do, do you know her name, Sai? Uh, she, uh, well, <laughs> she's my niece, so it's always my niece, but, yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's always my niece, but, um, she, um, when I saw you do this piece, it really, I was so excited about it because I, you don't find it very often that people sing, uh, in sign language, uh, yes. or use, or use sign language where there's music involved. And yes, so that was unique part of the show that many people really walk away from, uh, take something away from when they leave. And it's one of my favorite parts of the show as well. Yeah, that was, that was really special. And I told her and I said, Sharon, you're going to have to watch, uh, the broadcast tonight because, um, because we're going to be signing for you. And yeah. She was so happy to, to, so I need to ask you, so obviously you do know sign language. It, it wasn't just, you didn't just learn it for the song. So I guess my first question to you is this, are you fluent in 32 different languages? So I'm fluent in six languages and I'm conversational in 32. And I don't consider a language to be conversational unless I can have a full blown actual conversation. Some of those conversations may be about one topic, but at least it is a legitimate back and forth of piece of conversation because normally in the show, I go into the audience and I challenge anyone to kind of uh, trying to stump me and have a conversation with me in whatever language they want. And it's a great way to connect with my audience and to get to know them and to um, know how to cater the show towards them. If I have like a more heavily leaning Latinx uh, audience, or if I have um, an Italian or a more European uh, audience, it's great to know how to gear the show. And it's also just, you know, really fun to connect with the people that are watching the show. That it, well, it's interesting because I know that you do a lot of um, cruise ships. Am I correct? Yeah, I'm mostly headlining with uh, cruise lines, and unfortunately, that is putting me out of work quite a bit. But I have been doing a lot of the South Florida um, condo circuit. Um, obviously, that's really not quite back yet either. But I've been getting the show out all over the country and subsequently all over the world, and it's been an incredible journey and it's been very liberating and, and honoring and uh i just had so much fun sharing this show with the world peggy uh is one of our guests here tonight she says wow that was that was great oh, so thank, thank you peggy. thank you peggy for that um folks you can if you'd like if you have a question you can just type it in below and we will get to your questions so with these cruise ships um it must be so fun because, of course, you have people on these ships from all over the world, and it must blow their mind during your act when you can go over to them and have a conversation with them in their native language. Well, the best part about it is that you tell them I'm American and they're even more impressed <laughs> because a lot of the Europeans, they come from families uh, and education where they speak so many languages because of their neighboring countries. But when you tell them he's an American, that's when they really get impressed. <laughs> so uh, what language did you speak growing up in the house? Uh, so Hebrew was the first foreign language that I learned. I always grew up speaking English, but Hebrew became a very secondary language. My parents didn't speak to me in Hebrew, but Hebrew was a big part of my upbringing uh, because my extended family uh, lived in Israel and I would go to Israel more than two to three times a year uh, to visit 
like the 80% of my family that lives there. Uh, but my father, you know, Im immigrated to this country in the 80s and, and he wanted to live the American dream and, and he never really wanted to keep the Hebrew going in the house. So we only speak Hebrew when we're trying to talk about other people. <laughs> well, that so that's amazing. So w at what age did you realize that you sort of had this knack for picking up languages? How did that happen? Yeah. When I got to high school and I was, you know, forced to take a foreign language course, Hebrew obviously wasn't an, op an option because that doesn't really exist in many public schools. So I was like, well, I guess I'll take Spanish like everyone else. But my mother said, no, you have to take Italian. Italian is one of my favorite languages. It is so beautiful. And I saw that my school offered it. So I studied Italian for about four years. And at the same time, I did American Sign Language as well for four years. I, I befriended um, a deaf girl named Christy, and we became extremely close. And after school, we used to go to each other's houses and kind of uh, practice our sign language. And um, I started to become more uh, involved in uh, musical sign language interpretation. And I won some awards for my musical interpretations. And there's a video of me on YouTube signing Michael Jackson's Heal the World. Uh, most recently that was dedicated to everyone going through the pandemic together. Uh, so check that out if you want to. You just type in Yaniv Zarif, Heal the World. And uh, sign language has been a big part of my artistry. I haven't really been able to really use it in terms of uh, making friends, but more in the sense of making music. Uh, so, and it's same with Italian. And Spanish, I learned, I never actually studied Spanish. Um, I spent six months in South America traveling and because of my Italian, I was able to correlate a lot of the verbs and conjugations and uh, eventually I made a concerted effort to really learn the organization of the grammar and that took a few years and the same with Russian. I learned Russian from uh, unbelievable dancers that I worked with over the past few years. Uh, who didn't speak much English and I wanted to get to know them and I wanted to connect with them and and there wasn't a way to do that unless I broke the barrier with them and it sparked an interest for me that I took it to the next level and really learned how to read and write and I learned how to fragment sentences and by now I'd say I'm a pretty decent Russian speaker. Well, you know, the arts really bridges that gap between all the different nations and countries. And um, yes. at, the, at the Performing Arts Center, we bring in artists from all over the world. And one of my favorite um, shows to produce is the Russian ballet. We always bring in um, either the Moscow Festival Ballet or the Russian National Ballet. And it's it's so extraordinary. First of all, they're their their commitment to the craft is so uh, intense. So diligent. It's so, so diligent. diligent. And, um, we, you know, the day starts at 6 o'clock in the morning, maybe for a 3 o'clock uh, in the afternoon, sometimes 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, and these young people are traveling on buses. They're touring the whole country on buses. They get That's off true. the bus. I mean, here they are. They're dancers. They're sort of, you know, uh, and they're sleeping in these tight quarters. And uh, they come into the space and uh, they eat, they eat first and then, um, then they take class. And it's so interesting because um, you would think that because they're dancing their way across the, the United States, you would think that in a sense they would be warm, uh, but no, they before the performance they take a full class it's not it's not a 10 okay. warm up it's a full class and i'm always that's really my favorite part i'm always mesmerized watching them work and then after yeah. they've taken a full class um then they then they get on the stage and they put on a full ballet whether it's giselle or swan lake or sleeping beauty it's so incredible um yeah. It is, and it's not just in their art craft. They're very diligent in how they treat their bodies in general, how the type of foods that they eat, almost militant, you want to say, but really they know how to have fun at times too. And, you know, I just getting to know, getting to work with these type of people from Moldova and Ukraine and Russia, I have learned so much about their culture and have an immense amount of respect for their craft and, and how, how, how diligent they are with their and their work ethic is some of the highest I've ever experienced. I don't think that uh, many of our audience members realize that when we bring in these shows like the Russian Ballet or in the beginning of the show tonight, I showed a picture of Jose uh, Porcel Ballet Flamenco, um, that most of them don't speak English. I mean, there's maybe 
one or two in in the, in a company that does, uh, but most of them don't speak English. So we we find a way to communicate, and and then of course it's all about the arts. And once they take the stage, that you know all of that sort of uh, language barrier just falls to the wayside, and uh, and we're in it. So it's wonderful yeah. that you you have that added skill of not only helping us all to enjoy the arts, but you have that added skill to communicate with your audience in this unique way. Now, we're going to put you on the spot, I have a feeling, a few times tonight. Um, all right, bring have, it on. Let's get okay. someone to stop you, but I think it would we, be great. We have Tracy, who is asking you to sing for us in Italian. Yaniv, is there something, a little something you can sing on the spot in Italian for us? Absolutely, I can sing in Italian. How about a little bit Nessendorma? Oh, fabulous. Okay. Ed il mio bacio scioglierà il silenzio e dice mia. How was that for you, Tracy? Did you like that? <laughs> I wanted more. I was just getting so mesmerized. Was getting ready. <laughs> that was fabulous. <laughs> prepared that I, and I didn't want to take up too much time for that. Okay. Okay. Now we have Ron. Ron is coming on and he's asking, uh, do you get help translating the songs into different languages? Is there a special skill to translating a song? Thank you, Ron. Excellent question. So for the languages that I don't speak, yes, I do get help with them. And the languages that I do, and as you know, I think I told one of the stories um, with my Japanese friend who taught me how to translate Georgia and Japanese. But for the languages that I do know, it's actually another skill that you have to have, not only to translate a song into that language, but also to kind of fit the poetic meter of that song so that it either has a rhyme, um, so that it tells the same story, or at least, in some of the same way. And there's something that we can utilize called poetic license, which means you can kind of alter the way the story is being told. And I think that's one of the best things about music and language that can be so flexible. And I just love that. Well, uh, what, what, what are your earliest memories of uh, performing? When did you start performing? And when did you know that this was something uh, that you wanted to pursue full time? My God, you know, my mom always said I was born with a microphone. So it's just like, I can't even remember a time when I wasn't singing, when I wasn't trying to get uh, to the front of the stage whenever I would be with a classroom full of people. Um, but I think when I had my bar mitzvah in Jerusalem, it was the first time that I really got to hear my voice echo in a congregation, like with a big audience where I really felt like I was being listened to and I was I was valued for my voice. And I just kind of sang my heart out to read my Haftorah portion. And a lot of people for the first time were just like, what was that? That was incredible. And I, I felt like people were transfixed on the words that I was saying and, and the words that I was singing. And, and it, it made me realize that I could draw the attention of a crowd. And within one year after that, I booked my first uh, professional job on the national tour of The Sound of Music. And that was- Oh, so you, um, you were about 14 years old? I was 14 years old when I did the national tour of The Sound of Music. What part and did you play? Was, I was Kurt, the youngest oh. uh, boy, yes. Um, I believe my one of my solo lines was, <laughs> so long, farewell, off either saying goodbye, adieu, adieu to you and you and you. So there was the first German that I learned. Um, <laughs> and oh my gosh, people are donating to me from QPAC. Thank you guys so much. That is so wonderful of you guys Aww. to do that. Thank you for this wonderful platform. Um, and that was the first time I got exposed to the professional life of a performer. And it was a very seasonal kind of run. It wasn't all year, it was just about three months touring. and. Uh, it was a very special experience for me. I was 14 years old. That is so terrific. Uh, Yaniv, um, we like to ask our guests this question. Is there a, a specific role that you would like to play? Wow. Oh, gosh. You know, they just keep accumulating over the years, you know, because how much can you really do all at once? And for the past few years, I've been touring with my show. I just love, I love Little Shop of Horrors. And you want to play always, Seymour? I want to play Seymour. Am I not a Seymour? Or am I a Seymour? Suddenly I mean, Seymour. Yeah. There you go. Okay, we'll have to sing together. Woo! That's always been a goal of mine. I just, I feel like 
him and I are the same person. I love the music. <laughs> And it's such a it's such a great story too. I love it. You would be a great Seymour. But I'd be a great Seymour. <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. So uh wait, I'm gonna get back to our questions. We have people asking questions. Um okay. of, of here here's a question from Glenn. Of the 32 countries, how many have you had the opportunity to visit? Glenn, that's a fabulous question. Thanks for asking it. It really is, and I have some relevance. So I chose this spot right here to sing for you guys in front of because all of these, this is my world map of all the countries that I visited. And you can't see, you know, I'm just gonna bring the camera up a little bit and tell me if you can't see, but all of the dots, all the stickers is um, all the places of the world that I've been to. And I have been to all seven continents. Well, well, hold that, you gotta bring that a little bit closer because that is okay. remarkable. So you're telling me that those dots represents, represent all of the places you have been to? That is correct. And wow. All the way to the French Polynesian islands over here. And I've even been to Antarctica three times. <laughs> well, what, brought, what brought you there? Uh, I was there um, when I was, you know, working on cruise ships and, oh. you know, got the chance to fly to the bottom of South America and Ushuaia. And then I got to go to Antarctica and I got to do that three times. And it is absolutely magnificent. I think in total, I've been to 84 countries. Um, and that is something I feel very, very blessed to say. That is incredible. Uh, Tammy is asking a question. Do you have a favorite role that you have played? So something yes. that you've already done. What is that role? And, uh, you know, when did you play it? Yes. Thanks. You know, I don't know how many of your viewers will be familiar with it, but it is a treasured, treasured experience for me. It was the role of Leo Frank in Parade. And it tells the story of a Jewish man in the 19, in the 19 teens, I think it was 1912, who was convicted of a crime and was innocent, wrongly convicted. And it takes place in uh, Georgia. It was um, a true story, trial of the century. And the music is absolutely haunting and beautiful. It's by Jason Robert Brown. Please do check out that musical. It's called Parade. Um, you may have, it may have been done at QPAC. I'm not sure. Um, it premiered on Broadway in 1998 with Brent Carver and Carolee Carmelo. Um, a book by Alfred Urey, who did Driving Miss Daisy. Um, it is just a beautiful show, and that role changed my life, honestly, for not to uh, sound um, exaggerant, but it really it really brought me to love theater and to love how how storytelling can can be done, you know, in such a such a beautiful way. Vincent saying it's a great score. It is a great score. It is Vincent. Yes, yes, Vincent, you're absolutely right. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Um, do you, is there a particular type of music that you like to sing the most? Uh, is it Broadway? Is it jazz? Is it the American standards? Is it, um, you know, rock and roll? What is your favorite type of music to sing? You're going to be surprised, Susan, but it's Motown. What? I love Stevie Wonder. I love um, the Shirelles. Okay, I, I love Smokey Robinson. Hold I love them all. On. <laughs> for those, I mean, for those of our guests today who have been here in the past, now I can't even remember which show it was, but we were talking about singing and my ultimate dream. I've never wanted to be really the the focus of the attention, but one of my biggest, you know, dreams is to yeah. sing back up for Stevie Wonder. Oh my gosh, would that be an unbelievable dream come true for me as well. <laughs> and every well. everyone who knows me knows that because I mean the you know the backup singers I think they have the most fun because they yeah. don't have the pressure. They don't have the pressure of being the the focal point. They get to you know they get to stand, they get to sing those fabulous and they get yeah. to they get to dance. They get the best dance moves, you know, because it's like really choreographed hand stuff and a lot of this and shoulders and they get to have the most fun for sure. I'm doing my shoulders now. <laughs> so, uh, so that's great. We're actually trying to get, um, uh, we, we're trying to get Smokey Robinson to open up for us uh, when we come back. Um, I would be there if he does. Yeah, okay, at our, on, in yeah. our new theater. So that's going to be that's going to be really exciting. I've got to get back to these questions. Um what was Oh great, thank you Aiden. Aiden Fox wants to know what's the last show you saw on uh, Broadway? 
goodness, it just feels like a million years ago, doesn't doesn't it? Because it does. It, it does. Close. Um, ah, what was the last show I saw on Broadway? Um, well, I think it was Waitress. I had seen Waitress twice before, but I had just seen it uh, recently again because. Uh, somebody had gotten me, a friend of mine in the show had just gotten me tickets. To, but I feel like there was something even before that. Um, I don't even know what is on Broadway right now. There was so much. Uh, I got to see Hamilton again, and that right. was in December. And that was also great. Yeah, I think Hamilton was actually the last thing that I got to see. Lucky. I mean, I'm glad that they've made it available to us, but, um, you know, Definitely. there's nothing to really substitute being in being in the room where it happens, as they That's say in Hamilton. Line. <laughs> yeah, um, there's there's just nothing like it, you know. But um, we're we're grateful for this medium. Uh, but uh, we're 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 anxious, of course, to get back. Barry has a question for you. What do you do to keep practicing your languages while you're not able to travel? Excellent question. Yes. So my best friend is Duolingo, and Duolingo and I have a date every night between seven and eight, where we go through. Uh, the languages that I feel I need the most work on. And right now it kind of falls between Spanish and Russian. And I really try to keep up with those as well. And one of my, one of my close friends um, who used to live with me, Phil, uh, he speaks um, Italian. So I'm able to practice my Italian with him. And then my friend, my other friend, Barry, as well, who speaks Spanish, her and I try to communicate in Spanish as often as possible too, so that we can keep up with that. And also the best way to practice and to learn languages is by watching films that you're familiar with that is dubbed in another language so that you don't really lose the plot of the show or the movie, but you um, hear it in a different way and you're really able to pick up on what's being said. It's a great way to learn. That's a great idea. That's a great, I cannot yeah. believe, so you're actually practicing every night. Oh yeah, it's, I need to, it's part of my career. You know what I'm saying? I need to, I can't be a fraud. <laughs> Philip wants to know, I love this question. Have you ever been stumped by an audience member in one of your live shows who challenged you with a language you couldn't communicate in? <laughs> yes, I have. And I will tell you right now that uh, that has changed. So what happened when I performed, um, I made my debut of the show in New York City at Feinstein's 54 Below. And that night, this beautiful, beautiful Hindi, um, this beautiful Indian woman named Lakshmi uh, came to me with Hindi. And I had Punjab ready, but I didn't have Hindi prepared. <gasps> and she stumped me, but I am so ready to do Hindi now. I made sure of it to get enough under my belt so that that will never happen again. But honestly, it was one of the best moments of the show because the way I apparently have reacted was very comical. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's now in my reel when I try to sell the show to the cruise ships. It's one of the best parts where the audience gets such a kick out of it. If you want to check it out, you just type in Yaniv Zarif 2020 performance reel. You'll get to see that moment on there. Um, and yeah, Hindi was one of them. Oh my goodness, that is that that's a great story. Let me ask again. you. That's that I mean it's really a great it's a great story. Um yeah. have you ever have you ever in the middle of a song forgotten what language you're singing in? Uh not forgotten what language I'm singing in, but possibly forgotten how to translate whatever I was singing. Uh, and I'm trying to remember when that happened. I'm sure I've made up a sign or I've made up an Italian word at some point, especially because I speak Italian so well, there could have been a word that exists that I just added in there. And, uh, but I, I always, I'm always in the mindset of which language I'm speaking, but not, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't forget which language I'm, oh, there is one song that I sing in 32 languages, which I'm going to sing for you at the end of this interview on my ukulele and that that one i do forget what's coming next sometimes but i won't today because i'm prepared oh my goodness that's terrific i want to run remind our guests that now's your chance this this was supposed to be kind of a 10 minute q a but we had so many questions for ya uh, for yaniv that we are um we're extending it a bit so if you do have a question for us do type it in now as we are nearing uh, the end of our interview um I just, let me see now. Okay, 
Yes. Uh, when you get angry, what language do you get angry in? You know what? That's such a great question, Susan, because I've always said to myself, I want to be so good at a language that I can even speak it when I'm, when I'm angry, because that's when you know that you're really, really fluent in a language. <laughs> now, unfortunately, when I get angry, I still have to come out with the English. I would say probably Hebrew is the best language I can argue in and have an actual fight in. Um, but still, when I get really passionate about something, I always have to resort to English. It's very difficult, but I want to get to the point one day where I can argue, where I can discuss politics and and even like maybe become a translator for the UN in one of my languages. I want to be that good. Well, you have really um, wet our appetites. I don't know about our guests. I'm sure they would agree with me, but I am anxious to hear this song in, you say, 32 different languages? That's right, in 32 languages. So I'm going to let you uh, take the screen and share with this, uh, share this with us, and then uh, we'll come back on and... And, and say our goodbyes until the next time. So, ladies and gentlemen, Yaniv Zarif. And Yaniv, what is the name of this song? This is called the I Love You Song. The I Love You Song. And here we yeah, go. Is this a good view, right, by, by the way? Can you see me all right? We see you great. Okay, it's yeah. all you. Okay. I have some 32 languages to share with you. Ways to say that I love you. So please forgive me if I mispronounce one or two. I love you when you am what I need you them. Kochamche, Ashendu, Monefre, you te amo, you LA, Nakupinda, and let's let me miss them both. Te amo, te you best, medu lo, medu wo. Ich liebe dich, te amo, akunchita kamo, sarm, e te amo, seri sabayor, ya gaskeve, te sakam, ya lo blute bia. And if I sing in every tongue, there will be no language unsung. Then you will know how much I love you. And if you still don't understand, Google Translate will give you a hand. Then you will know how much I love you. Saya saya awa mahal kita ani yo hevoda ekhap chalit ayo haya owe ya kaskede sha bombrador ekhap vinyao ana bahada choose a for me atar and if I sing in every tongue there will be no language on song then you will know how much I love you. And if you still don't understand, Duolingo will give you a hand. Then you will know how much I love you. Okay, you guys heard it once. Now sing along. A one, two, three. I love you. I knew well. I need you. Then I can't say I should do more. If I you the amo you and they not cooking the dollars next week Istanbul. The amo the best medu lo medu wo. So welcome to my show here at the Performing Arts Center of Queensboro. Do you like that? And I hope that you love me too. Thank you so much. Yay! <laughs> and we even got a shout out. That was so fabulous. That was so fabulous. Um, oh, thank, you. thank you for doing that for us. Uh, Meryl has a quick question for you. Uh, with yes. theater being closed until 2021, um, uh, Yaniv, do you do you think do you see yourself doing some more <laughs> online performing? Um, well, first, first thing I got to say, this is my first uh, opportunity to perform online, and I want to thank you and QPAC so much for having me because I have just been yearning to uh, sing for somebody and to perform for so long. You know, I'm cooped up in my New York City apartment all the time, and uh, it's just so nice to be here. I would love to find another platform where I can perform online. I do post videos on Instagram occasionally um, and on Facebook. Um, but other than that, I really am, I don't see myself working again until cruise ship sail again, which is going to be, you know, 
probably a while, unfortunately. Well, we're going to have you back when we're able to assemble again. We're going to have a QPAC Live reunion. And all uh -huh. of the people who have performed for us on QPAC Live, we're going to have them back. And it's going to be such a, a great celebration. Um, just thinking about it brings tears to my eyes. I'm super That's excited. Uh, Yaniv, thank you. Thank you. And listen, come back again. We're going to be doing this for the next few months. Do come back again. Thank, thank you. Susan. Thank you for sharing your talents with us tonight. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, to my audience, uh, do get on our website, www.visitqpac.org. That's qpac.org. And see what we have in store for you. Next week, we have a tremendous performer, Judy Carmichael. Uh, I know Judy. You do? Yes, I, I met her on cruise ship. She is phenomenal. Thank I you for saying that. She is phenomenal and um, she's beautiful and phenomenal. Beautiful. So sweet. She actually had a big hand in helping me start my career as a headliner. You know, I came to her when I was younger and, and I asked her for advice and she was there and willing to give everything she had to teach me things. And because she's been doing this for a long time and she is just a top notch performer and a wonderful human being. So please do tune in for that. Thank you so much for that plug. That was yeah. so nice of you. That's next Friday at 7 p.m. And also, folks, don't forget that we're offering these wonderful workshops. We have two going on for children and two going on for adults. And um, email us. If, 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 if you're having financial difficulty, we're not going to turn anybody away. Email us at boxoffice dot qcc dot cuny dot edu box office dot qcc dot cuny dot edu uh, if there's a workshop you would like to take let us know we're not going to turn you away we will figure it out um, we have great sponsors our legislators who we thank uh, for recognizing that doing this for the community is so important and uh Again, thank you, folks. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And uh, we will see you next Friday at 7 p.m. Yaniv, thank you so very much. Thank you so much, QPAC and Susan. And thanks Hands to my up. team at Epic Arts. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you all soon. Signing off. Much love. See you next week.